Hello everyone, welcome back to the Shintaro Higashi Show with Peter Yu. First and foremost, thanks to our sponsors, Jason and Levon. Guys, send me a message on, on Instagram, DM, that you are the sponsors, and I will legitimately have a conversation <laughs> with you. <'Cause>, yeah. <laughs> right? Because we're just so thankful. You know, yeah. It's because of you guys that we could do stuff like this, and you guys too can be a major sponsor for us, as is now Fuji is and Judo TV, discount yeah. coach Shintaro. So thank you very much for that. Go check that out. Right? Got a lot right. of stuff going on now. Yeah, we're legit. We're know? practically Joe Rogan at this point. <laughs> yeah, we're coming for you, Joe Rogan. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Logan with an L. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, so today uh, it was a suggestion from one of our sponsors. This is one yeah. of the things you could do. Uh, give us a suggestion. And it's from Sean. And he wanted to talk about, wanted us to talk about judo metagame. Yeah, metagame. Nice. Yeah, so yeah. a metagame is a. A game within the game. So usually it refers to in a sport, for example, yeah. there's a strategy within the sport, and then there's a strategy that counters a strategy. Yes, yes. All that. So that's yeah. called the meta game. Right. Yeah. So obviously, aside from like the basic fundamental gripping stuff, there's games within the game. Like if you look yeah. at tennis, you're hitting the ball to one side, the one side, one side, and crown it, and then you're hitting it to the opposite side of the court. Right. You know. So same thing. Like that's a basic strategy in judo, right? You're going like. Dominant side, dominant side, dominant side throws, turn throws a soto, turn throws a soto, right versus right, and then you switch it and go for a big sasai. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like that's something, you know? And then you get like an option like going high throws, high throws, high throws, and then you go for a drop technique. Yeah. Because they get used to sort of that thing. And that's like sort of basic <clears throat> strategical stuff that we've already kind of covered in a podcast. Right, right. Right? But yeah. I think we should, in this episode, I thought we would maybe go into more details about, like, I don't know, in the professional settings. We can even go even to BJJ. Yeah. Uh, you know, you see that a lot in professional settings because, one, uh, for example, in soccer, for yeah. the longest time, there was a strategy called Tiki Taka. Basically, mm. it got popular in Spain, and then you'll just pass around everyone. Yeah. But then it got so dominant but then they found a way to counter that by just yeah. sitting back and then going for like counter attacks yeah so tiki taka is no more so things like that happen right mm -hmm. like i think in bjj yeah. for a while no one looked at leg locks but yeah. then donna and the death squad or whatever yeah. they they came over and then they exploited that you know yeah weakness and then the leg locks and now everyone does leg locks right yes yeah so I'll give you some examples of yeah, that in yeah, judo specifically, yeah. like the Cabarelli lift. Mm -hmm. It's a very Georgian style thing. Yeah. And Georgians have their folk style wrestling called Chidaoba, which is with yeah. a gi, sort of like with no sleeves, but it's like a vest almost. And they go like the collar grip with the yes. back, right? And there's a Georgian A, Georgian B position. When you go yeah. over the opposite shoulder and you grab the belt, that's Georgian A. Yeah. And the receiving side is Georgian B. That's how I like to explain it, right? Yeah. And then going from there and going for these massive lifts was a thing, you know? Yeah. So when Cabarelli famously started throwing everybody with this, everyone's like, all the Russian style guys were like, oh man, we got to use a little bit more of this. Yeah. And then they develop a style. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then now there's sort of counters like preemptively, like as they're going over that shoulder, timing a sode, timing a sasai, you know, and that sort of became a thing. And then receiving Georgian A and then going Georgian B and lifting and throwing from there, like Uranage, mm -hmm. like there's a strategical thing that's happening even within the game, you know? Right, right. So when you go like, one of my guys, like, we're, our guys aren't really good in that position so much. My guys yeah. at KBI, right? So, majority of the times when they get into a competition with a guy that has his style, the match is won or lost in prevention mm -hmm. of that, right? Yeah. So, like, having good basic grip fighting fundamentals to prevent that over-the-back Georgian grip. That's you know? a meta game. Right? Yeah. So, that's yeah. A, sort of a meta game, right? Yeah. So, there's a, yeah, it's always, like, oh, one strategy becomes dominant and then like for example i know i mean i'm, I'm a big yeah. one he lee fan he's a tayotoshi master right yeah so he that was his uh meta game he he said in an interview like he does this thing where what his right arm gets gri gripped by the other person and he couldn't really yeah. shake it off so he yeah. actually used that to do the one one handed tayotoshi and that was yeah. his meta game yeah and now people uh you know people uh, emulate him and then also right. people d tend not to grip that with yes. against koreans now because yeah. they know it's coming yep. so things like of that sort yeah yeah and then a lot of koreans and japanese have a little bit of a thing because they're so close and they yeah. train together a lot and i used to go to kukushikan university and see korean guys there all the time like on like speaks japanese and yeah. goes there all the time and trains you know yeah 
and there's a lot of like hybrid Japanese cross pollination. Yeah. Yes. So the Korean judo style was developed to combat that two handed Japanese judo. Yeah. Yeah. So they did lots of one handed stuff, lots of drop stuff, lots of they even have a Korean Sanagi. Yeah. That was that was truly a to combat the. Traditional yeah. Japanese style, but then yeah. now Japanese players started doing it before it got yes. banned. Yeah, yeah, before it got banned. But I mean, that was super successful for a little yeah. bit, you know, because uh, most guys have a two-handed judo style, and then the Koreans kind of mastered like not letting the Japanese grip, putting one yeah. hand on, and as they're trying to get the collar grip, they'll connect hands and then they'll go rip it. Right, you know, and then there were a lot of drop senagi, so Koreans started the whole the whole country started adopting the style. Yeah, you know. You rarely see like a stand-up Uchimata guy coming out of Korea. No, not really. No, you know? yeah, it's usually now the meta game. Korean meta game is revolves around a lot of the hand throws. You know, yeah, like just drop, yeah. drop through techniques. Yeah, yeah, and interesting we have, stuff. Yeah. yeah, and we have our own meta game here in, in the states, in a sense, like the focus yeah. on Newaza, like Travis. Yeah. You know, the over under pass. Yes, you know and. All that, like I, I mean, you, you can tell the story better. Like, why did Jimmy Pedro and the, the squad came up with that strategy? I mean, because you're just not doing enough yeah. tachiwaza, right? As yeah. the guys in Japan mm-hmm. or the guys in Russia, so they figured, hey, man, like whatever these guys go for a sacrifice throw yeah. or miss a throw, there's a transitional newaza period, which is like a five to ten second window where you yeah. can kind of attack. So they specialize in that. Yeah, you know, they won majority of their matches. The Jimmy Pedro guys, Kayla, yeah. Travis. Uh, Jimmy Page with those, with the, the matches with these pins, you know. Semi final, Travis Stevens yep. have pinned the Georgian guy right out. Yep. Yeah. So it's like whenever you go Sumigaeshi going for that, you know, if you get a Sumigaeshi Tomonage drop Sanagi guy, you could really sort of cycle through these like turnovers and chokes and arm bars from Turtle, right, in the transitional period yeah. and then really capitalize on that. So some people specialize in this, you know, look yeah. at Kanto. Yeah. Right? So that's sort of a meta game that you could kind of, you know, develop to win matches right yeah. win matches and it could be your thing your special thing and then it's like okay then you kind of have to expand based on that like how do i force guys to go for bad drops yeah you have to be able to outgrip them right you outgrip them and then you put a dominant position even if you can't throw big yeah. or big hurrah you outgrip them so they're like oh man this is uncomfortable let me go for a bailout throw drop Agi, and then, and then, then that's where, exactly where you wanted them. yeah you know i mean jimmy pedro has that whole grip sequence right the grip system right yeah because yeah. grip fighting is so a big part of his game right and then when you get an out grip he's relentless with his attacks and he forces yeah. newaza and then when the guy goes newaza he's, he's already a, beat yeah yeah you know yeah it's like when a jiu-jitsu guy pulls guard on a judo guy <laughs> that's a meta game in a way <laughs> it is a meta game yeah it's like oh man I, do i want to get taken down or play this gambit style game where i Retreat yeah. a little bit, go to the ground, and then when he engages, yeah, right, try to sort of swap the position. It's yeah. essentially a takedown. How is it different? You know, right, yeah. So having that kind of a, a style, you know, that's a meta game in itself. It's a masterful way to like pull the guy into Newaza, yeah. whether it's Tomonage, Sumigaishi, whatever it is. You know, obviously I'm, preventing over under pass and the quick yeah. passes is a big one. So like hiding that sort of a thing. The way you're teaching judo at your BJJ school is kind of a meta game right now, right? Like it, the, instead of just pulling guard, you now see an opening where you could just actually throw a tomoe nage in. Yeah, the, yeah. All, everything I teach yeah. at the jujitsu school is based for jujitsu. Yeah, right. I don't teach any stand up like straight tachiwaza, sotogari, harai goshi. I don't teach any of that stuff because it's useless yeah. to these guys. So yeah, you know? yeah. So what are these things that jujitsu guys already do that you could build off of? They are already good at pulling guard, right? And then they're already good at reacting to pull guard pulling. So the moment you faint the guard pull, they have a certain reaction that every single one of these guys do. Yeah, you know. And then you want to capitalize off of that, whether it's coachy and then cut the hands, so and now you have a <clears throat> dominant position, <clears throat> and then you could pull guard. Yeah. Right. Or like fake pull guard, fake pull guard, and then actually pulling guard or going for tomonage. Yeah. That stuff is just so much more useful than doing just stand up uchikomi, harai goshi, uchimana. These guys are not going to be able to do it. Right. You know? Right. And it won't present itself when you're doing an actual jujitsu match. Yeah. Is right. It, so it's like, uh, yeah. it's a very specific type of takedown game designed for BJJ yeah. guys. Yeah. You know? So we just kind of cover like good examples of meta games just to give you guys an idea. You know, yeah. I think this actually will make it e- more fun to watch. Yeah. You know, like judo, and then I know Shintaro has been doing all these commentaries, and you yeah. know, you can follow along, and then you know, you yeah. can watch 
and try to figure out the meta game of each player. Yeah. And so now let's kind of bring it to more personal. Like it, I'm, I think eventually I want I like to talk to you about like how to develop your own meta game. But yeah, to start us off, what's your judo meta game? Like what's what's your strategy? My strategy is never letting the game let the person get two hands on. I don't want to say no, two hands on, but it's like always staying in dominant position. <clears throat> You know so what I mean? Grip fighting is very grip important. Grip fighting and then staying one step ahead, whether it's like I'm showing an attack, I'm yeah. looking for something, I'm setting something up, I'm breaking your posture or breaking a sleeve. Yeah. So it's one of those four things and angling off. So they're always reacting to something that I'm doing. It's a lot of busy work judo. You know what yeah, I mean? I see. And I didn't develop my style like that before. Uh, and little by little, I sort of developed this style because I had to teach and make sure that people were safe and I was doing sensei judo. Yeah. And then I wanted to develop like an Ashiwaza game. Um, so that's kind of how I like to do it, right? Like, I don't like just locking up in 50 yeah. 50 because the risk is too high. You guess wrong, you get taken down. Injury risk is much more. So I'm a lot more like grip fighting, moving, fainting, right. taking the hand off, showing stuff, snapping. He goes for a bad throw, counter that. Yeah, I mean, if, the feet, you, you, know? you guys will know if you ever get a chance to do run yeah. with Shintel, it's, it's really, you can't really think. Is it, no, yeah, yeah, I'm always like sort of, yeah. uh, two or three steps ahead and you're always trying to catch up and I'm always moving yeah. around. Can I get caught? Of course I can. You know, everyone yeah. can. But you have a very interesting style too. Yeah, I mean, it, that's actually, I, I'm, let's talk about, yeah, my style is more like, so, I I was a very a Korean person, so I Do you like the, even the, remember what your style is, Peter? I know, I used to so long, so long, dude. <laughs> oh, I, oh that, by the way, I do it every week now. I'm Where? back at it. Yeah, at, at Christian's gym. Oh, oh yeah, you connected with, with girls? girls? Yeah, yeah. How's yeah. he doing? He's good. He's good. He's te- he teaches a university class. Is with he in shape? Pops. Yeah, yeah. He's good. Yeah, oh, he's good, he's good. still solid, man. Beats oh, man. me up. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. So I, my game was. So I would like to ask you about yeah. how you got to that point more in detail. But yeah, just to give you an idea, give you guys an idea on how I did it. Like, so my style is more like I have both right. I'm a righty, but I have very good left a few left throws and I had to develop that because my right side was getting shut down all the time. Yeah. So I would show my right. That's my meta game. I'll show right, right, right. And then I'll surprise with the left. Mm. So that's my meta game, so to speak. Yeah. And then, then it, it's not just that because the first attack is a big left attack. Ipon Senagi. But oh, and that was the, the yeah. And then there's like two or three defenses that comes, and you use those defenses. You just right. know the main defenses from there. Yeah. And then you adjust really well, right? So I, yeah, I can even chain the. That's another thing. Like I said, oh, yeah. I started doing a lot of the left ipon seo again, and I, I realized that people will spin yeah. out and all that, and I developed like a follow up technique through that. So that became yeah. my like meta game. Should we just out all your game right I now? I know. So I uh, I gotta yeah. guard this a little bit because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, you know I have a I have a target on my back. You know, yeah. like people. Oh, the other day at Christian class, this guy yeah. is a listener of this podcast, so mm-hmm. he he yeah. knew me. You know, yeah, good. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, so that's my meta game. <laughs> so the moment you were both and now he's I know. <laughs> and strangled you. Yeah, and then they just uh, choke me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, yeah. so it rose from necessity for me. Like it, I was yeah. just trying to like, oh, I get I'm getting shut down, so I'll like add more thing or change, tweak it. So how did you get to that style right now? The the meta game you play. Like was it out of necessity? What was your style before? And then how did you arrive here? So I'll tell you, like, when I was younger, I did a lot of drop Sanagi. Yeah. You know, and I was a drop Sanagi spammer. I was like a spammer. <laughs> hey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it worked for me because I was always in a much heavier division with bigger, taller dudes. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, like, turning fast and then attacking Kochi, turning fast and snapping them down and just having a very uh, aggressive sort of drop Sanagi game was really my yeah. style, right? And then I hurt my elbows. So I couldn't do Morote. So I was trying to do Ipon Sanagi, but it was kind of difficult. I couldn't figure it out. And then I yeah. kind of developed the Uchimata game. Uh-huh. And I started working on it in the dojo, and it would work in the dojo against guys who were my size or smaller. Yeah, yeah. Not taller guys. Uh-huh. I had a very big problem with doing this kind of judo to the taller Tall- dudes. Yeah. Right? And then, naturally, because leg grabs were allowed, anytime I got out gripped because of my wrestling in high school and college, right, right, I was right. just shooting on the legs to escape bad positions. Yeah. You know? So... I didn't focus too much on gripping back then, but when they took out leg grabs, it was a big portion of my escape system. Oh, yeah, though. That's another way to develop a metagame. Rule yeah. changes, right? Yeah, rule yeah. changes. So then yeah. it's like, all right, 
Do I focus on gripping? Do I look, focus on like bailout attacks? Like, yeah. what do I really focus on? And then, you know, whenever I would go with tall guys, like I would sort of like trial and error, trial and error, like little by little kind of develop this thing. And then eventually I've developed a Sumi Tomonaga game and my Niwaza get better and then my gripping really got better. So now it's like, it's very rare that a tall guy comes down my back and grabs right, and right. wins position anymore. You know, and uh, just taking the hand off was a huge challenge, right? Because yeah. I'm pretty strong, but like there's guys who are 220 who are much stronger than me. Yeah, yeah. So trying to figure out how, and I remember specifically to this day, how I came about like how to take the hand off the collar. Yeah. I went with this kid, Lehaw from uh, Austria. And, yeah. you know, he was pretty good as a junior. I don't yeah. know if he did anything as a senior. He yeah. lived in the United States for a little bit. Nice kid. And he was, I outweighed this kid by 60 pounds and he mm. would just pulse the sleeve off my, his collar, my hand, sleeve hand, like my collar hand. Yeah. Yeah. He would grab my sleeve and just pulse it off yeah. and just time it. And then hand would almost always come off. Uh. And it was so skillful the way he would like, and I can never keep that collar grip for more than like 10 seconds, 15 seconds. You, you still do that. you like, I do a little it, yeah. bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> Legitimately got it from that one kid. Oh wow! I mean, obviously Japanese guys do yeah. it. You know, a lot of champions already do this, but right? Consciously, you thought you learned it from him because yeah. I worked out with this kid who I outweighed by like seventy pounds at the time. Yeah, I was ten times stronger than this kid physically, yeah. and then I couldn't hold on to his lapel, and it wasn't a hand strength issue. Yeah, yeah. it was him doing it technically, and I've seen people do it. I've seen people talk about it. I've seen coaches yeah. try to tell me. But like experiencing it there when the kid's 150 pounds and I couldn't hold on to his collar because of what he was doing, I was like, I got to get this skill. You know, yeah. I have to develop the skill. I was probably like 24 at the time. And then I started working that into my game kind of. You know, it took a really long time. Did you, you know? ask him to show you? Not really, no. Oh, yeah. I see. We would just do Rondori and I'd be like, what the hell? Yeah. Right? And then eventually I was like, all right, Tomonage fake and then snap that hand and pulse the hand down and go coach him, pulse it and move and then try to fake a drop in I and pulse that hand down like so it's, it doesn't have to be like a one one shock and then the hands off it's it'll never like, come off because yeah. if the person knows it's coming they'll squeeze and when yeah. they're squeezing that hand's not coming off it's literally your ability to push away versus his ability right. to squeeze right so it's trying to time the moments where he's not squeezing like by throwing some ashiwazas too or like yeah because okay. the natural reaction when you're falling back like whoa trying to yeah. you know Keep your balance with your hands, and then your hand loosens always, right? I see. So a lot of the meta style things that I've developed little by little is mm. just, you know, I hate to say it like this, but it's trial and error, finding guys and trying to yeah. imitate little things that people do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you, um, Yeah. are you going through the same process? I, uh, well, let's uh, and, and ask, let me ask two questions, I guess. Yeah. For, for judo, are you yeah. still changing your meta game? So, or do you think for now your meta game is pretty set? It's set, but you know, for instance, like uh, I'll give you an example, right? Like for instance, Gianni's gotten so good at two-handed judo, right yeah. versus left, and I've been teaching him for a little while now, maybe two, three years. Yeah. And now he's so good, I don't want to stay in there with him. Yeah. Uh, you know, could I stay in there? Yeah, but the chance of me getting caught is getting higher and higher. Right, right, you know? right. So like the moment he puts his hand on first, which I've been teaching specifically, yeah. I'll grab that sleeve, go around the back, because that's something that he's not really used to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then from there, I could do Sumi to one side or the other side, like a butterfly right. to the other side. And having that yeah. sort of a thing really kind of throws him off because it's something unique that I do that he may encounter. And I'm not playing into his game. So then now Gianni will develop. He needs to adjust his meta game. He needs to, to address that a little bit. And yeah. then I'll use that sort of a thing to kind of like go around the back or go belt to belt and hit the hip, yeah. which I don't want him playing in that position. Yeah. I don't want to, right? So he's been taught to kind of like not be in that position mm. for a very long time unless he has to do it. Like he's down by yeah. a score the Thursday left. So like me forcing that game mm. is sort of a, a thing that I should be working on actively, mm-hmm. you know? And it always benefits me because I'm much heavier than him. Mm. I have like, he's fighting 81 now. So oh, when he's okay. cutting weight, he's a little bit lighter. Let's say he's 185 pounds. And, you know, I had a huge launch and I'm 220 that day or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a big difference to yeah. be, you know, hip to hip with somebody, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, that's something that I'm working on, kind of. You know, I'm not actively working on it, you know? And then if I'm going with a beginner, I'll force Georgian A or Georgian B because I should work on that a little bit. 
I see. Uh, you know, as a po- to give them different looks, and mm-hmm. then just in case I get caught in there someday. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. You have a feel for it. Yeah. Yeah, and even in jujitsu, it's like, could I be like an aggressive? Yeah, I was about to ask yeah. you about ju- your jujitsu meta game. Yeah. Yes, because I could be like an aggressive pressure passer. Yeah. You know, because I'm so heavy. Uh, but that prevents me from developing other styles, right? Yeah. Other loose passing styles and outside passing game and stuff like that, just mobility passing stuff. So, you know, I'm actively working on the other stuff, open guard stuff from bottom that heavyweights don't usually do that I'm trying to do against lightweights. Mm. So there's never a shortage of lightweights that don't that, that's going to avoid me. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. I'm the most popular guy in the room. Being rolled, <laughs> I swear to God to you. If I say so hey, myself. Hey, that's... Uh... You know? That's that's very yeah. rare for a heavyweight. There's a lot. Very yeah. rare. Very yeah. rare. Yeah. So like uh, I adjust my game accordingly and then try to fill in the gap. And I'm not really trying to specialize too much to win tournaments, right? Right. I'm trying to be the most well-rounded grappler. I want to know everything. Mm. That's my sort of game. I love it so much. I want to be able to go into a match and say this guy's a half guard player. I'm not. I'm not going to enter the half guard. Mm. I'll just freaking avoid all of it and just loop pass, loose pass and just destroy him there. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I want to be able Dude. to like this guy only has a guard game from bottom, loose like an open guard game from bottom. I'll pull guard first, force him on top, oh. butterfly and sweep him to the to side control, right? Just to kind of avoid. Right. I want to be able to do that. That's how I good I want to get at all the auxiliary stuff. And if I get forced into that half guard against the half guard player, I want to know that position better than that guy. So that's the kind of approach that I I'm see. kind of taking with jujitsu, where I'm still trying to learn as much as possible. Mm. Same with judo. You know, yeah. uh, but judo, it's just so much more unforgiving. You make a mistake in training, you're getting slammed. Yeah, right? yeah. So I'm much less likely to take those risks in judo. It's yeah, too much. The risk is higher for experiment, experimentation. Yeah, it is. You get thrown on your head. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that actually is a good uh, segue to my, I think, final question. Like, how do you recommend uh, to hobbyists? Mm. which are the majority, uh, to develop metagames. Like, do you even recommend developing your own metagame or, for hobbyists? Or if so, how? Yeah. What would be the best way? I we explained th- yeah. how, but is there a better way? I think first and foremost, you need to develop someone else's game a little bit first, right? Know the fundamentals. Right versus right, right versus left, the basics yeah. of the basics. Do everything that everyone else is doing. And then little by little, add stuff to it that's unique to you. you yeah. Know? Because to invent your own game and invent your own meta from the get-go when you don't know what's out there, yeah. it's almost impossible. You, right, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I think first and foremost, you want to develop your fundamental game first and then sort of think about it and then have conversations with your coach. You know, mm. And then you'll start learning new things about your game and your body type and style and things like this. You know, For instance, like me with open passing, open guard from bottom, yeah. I have such short legs. Most people won't suggest something like this for me. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, dude, just go force half and then wrestle up. You have great wrestling background. You could just right. take anyone down like that. Uh, but I kind of refused that kind of like uh, just specializing in that just for specifically yeah. winning matches, you know? I wanted to work on my open game. And then I yeah. found out because I have such short ass legs, <laughs> for me to pommel my leg in front of the person, uh, like it's, you know, much shorter distance than a guy that's like 6'3, six, 6'4. Six, yeah, yeah. So it's an unexpected thing. You know, it's like when Ariel Zevi from Israel, who's a European champ, yeah. hit me with a drop Marote uh-huh. to the left. And he's freaking 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, right, right. I'm, you know, like I didn't expect that. And he, I got launched. You know what I mean? And he right. does that to a lot of guys. Yeah. It's like, yeah. how does this guy have a drop like a, a Marote yeah. guy, Marote Senagi game? Yeah. So sometimes it works like that way. You know yeah. what I mean? Because the people don't expect it from you. Yeah. Yes. So that's my answer to that. I hope okay. I answered the question. I can't even remember the question. <laughs> like how to develop your meta. Like uh... Yeah. Start with the basics first because you're trying to circumvent some of the stuff that everyone else knows, right? You're trying to know yeah. more than the, right? And a lot of the times, you know, what's the difference between a black, bless you, a black belt yeah. and a, you know, a green belt or something, or what's the difference? It's like it's a information asymmetry. Yeah. Right? You just yeah. know more than the person. The person is going to go, Ochi, Osoto, Sasai. You know how to counter every single one of those things. You know when you're in better position, they don't. And we had a, a guest who was like yeah. a big, strong yellow belt. And yeah. then he, he was in losing position, spamming attacks as hard as he can, yeah. burning the gas tank. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're not going to be able to throw the guy. Yeah. 
You're just not going to be able to throw. So you have to fight out of that position first in order mm. to make right. those attacks count almost, right? You have a shot at taking this guy down. You know, but he doesn't, he doesn't know that. You know? So it's, it's like this. I think the way I would summarize is uh, the meta game comes from, you know, it's a game within the game. So meaning yeah. you, you're, it's all by exploiting the opening, like the gap between games that yes. already exist. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the keyword is the games that already exist. So you don't have to know what the games are out there in order to identify gaps mm. in them. Yeah. Then that's where you can fill in, fill in with your own style. Yes. Yeah. And the magic yeah. is in between the lines, when you're yeah. reading in between the lines, right? Everyone could read the actual words and understand the thing. Yeah. But making inferences and things like this and then threading, like even like going from guard to guard, yeah. right? Oh, I'm going for this thing. These are the main attacks that I do from Spider Lasso. I go for this inversion. I go for that, you know, off balance, whatever it yeah. is. Ah, uh, you know, he steps out of it. And now I go into like a De La Hiva guard. But as I'm going into it, I'm already off balance on the person. Yeah, yeah. Right. So like thinking a couple steps ahead because you know how these play, you know, these positions integrate with each other. Yeah. Right. Same yeah. thing with Tachiwaza. You know what yeah. I mean? Man. Hey, you know, I, I'll Just give think, you one of the yeah. things that you do. Right. Right. I, don't, right. I don't even know <laughs> yeah i feel yeah. like you know my meta game better than i do i mean yeah. that's that's what a coach does yeah yeah so it's like right versus right we're winning we're yeah. doing judo right and yeah. you're fighting for that sleeve off pull yeah. the sleeve off pull the sleeve off if i don't have a good control of the collar yeah. you're gonna go tayatoshi yeah yeah you know and then sometimes as you go on tayatoshi i'll just let go yeah. and you'll do a full spin as you're facing me and then if i'm not conscious you'll come right at me there Oh yeah, you right, know you see what I mean. You know why I started doing that? I got countered a couple yeah. of times, yeah. like in the tournament. Yeah. I did that. I spun around because the guy let go, yeah. and then yeah. I was just like dumbfounded. I was like, "Whoa!" I spun, and then yeah. I got countered. So yes. I was like, "Yeah, I gotta fill in the gap." And I was just like, "Okay, I'm gonna use it as like a grip fighting, grip breaking technique." Yeah, and then I go for it, right into it. <laughs> yeah, and then sometimes it's like I take that hand on the collar, left hand yeah. pulse, left hand pulse. I take that hand off, and you break free. Yeah, and the moment you break free, Ipon Senagi Osoto combinations come. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, so it's like uh, anticipating that because I've done judo with you so many times. You know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. And then it's like that transition between like you're trying to escape a bad position because I'm controlling this hand. Mm. Oh shit, it's gone. Let me go get it. You're entering Ipon Senagi, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you're not ready for the bi-directional thing that you're about to do, turn Ipon Senagi or run that Osoto. Yeah. Right? Uh, you can get caught potentially. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to make sure to lean to this opposite corner. <laughs> yeah. So that stuff's the Ipon Senagi, I'm Ipon Senagi yeah. and Osoto together. Right, like you can uh, yes. block both. Yeah. yeah, so that's my leaning. And then when the Osoto doesn't work, you're locked in there. You'll I go turn drop, again. Yeah. drop Senagi there. Drop yeah. Ipon, right? So you go high upon Senagi, Osoro, drop upon Senagi. Yeah. But by the time you're dropping, I'm already trying to thread the loop, the choke in. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like that's like sort of embedded in my patterns. You know what I mean? Uh, but if you fake upon Senagi and come back, Ouchi, you might catch me. Because that's uh, something that I'm really not anticipating. You know, and there's sometimes yeah. that in my mind, I'm like, is this the day that he's going to cut back with the Ochi? <laughs> You know, maybe, right? Yeah. So it's like that sort of thing where you're kind of like, that's sort of expert level, right? Yeah. But only after you know the normal sort of things. Yeah. Right? Normal people don't go lefty Ponce and Agi Osoto. Yeah. They might go lefty Ponce and Agi, right? So that's why you may catch the beginners, right? Yeah, yeah. And the advanced guys will react, but you will be able to read those reactions and adjust accordingly. Yeah. You know? And the really advanced guys already know that you're going to do all these different things. I know all the different options and the one or two off chance things that you may do. Cut back with an Ochi, yeah. right? Or like fake all those things and then go back with the Sumi guys to the opposite side or something like that. Very unlikely. But maybe you do it. I'll, I'll, uh, I gotta give it a go th tonight. Yeah. yeah. So, like, uh, so I think this was just a good example of what a good coach should do. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, talk like, about that yeah. and being able to recognize these patterns. Yeah, I could do it in judo, but I can never do it in chess. I'm terrible at chess. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you usually, keeps beating me. <laughs> you guys still play a lot? We played Thanksgiving. I, yeah. I couldn't touch him. He just destroys I mean, me. 
that that guy's go to t- goes to tournaments and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know the issue with me and Chess, dude? I only play Blitz games because I don't have the attention span to do it all the game. <laughs> uh-huh. I keep making the same mistakes over and over again. <laughs> That's the problem, you know? You, I mean, Blitz is like, it, it's more fun, right? But don't you guys have a long running game on, on your phones? No. no? I, can't, I can't. Oh, you can't do keep that. Keep my attention for that long. Yeah. I tried to do a 20 minute game though. I was like, all right, I'm going to do the 20 minute game, yeah. sit there, actually think through all the moves, and then go back and study that game. Dude, like seven minutes in, I was already daydreaming. Like I was like, like <laughs> I was like forfeit, dude. I can't even. It's like I mean, it's a different game, right? Like if you do, if you enjoy blitz, why don't why not just because like those guys, the hustlers yeah. in um, Union Square Park, they all they only play blitz, right? Yeah, but they've spent time playing long games too. Oh, really? Have to. Okay. Yeah, you just have to. I see. Yeah. Anyway, meta yeah. game, very interesting. I love talking about your judo. I miss your judo. Oh, you know what I mean, yeah. We'll 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 yeah. soon. I'll I'll go visit. I'll go yeah. visit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and see, yeah, maybe my meta game will have changed, and I'll surprise you. <laughs> maybe, maybe. That's when I just go like this. And... <laughs> That's this when I pull a... guard first. Yeah. Oh man, you're dirty pull guard. Because now guard you're gonna think now. like, oh, I'm gonna try this thing now. So yeah. you're trying that whole freaking thing, right? Maybe like fake ipon senagi, fake ipon senagi, like yeah. you know, like all this. Oh, maybe you're gonna yeah. try to cut back ochi. Oh, but okay. yeah. If I go guard pull guard pull tomonage tomonage, you're like, oh shit, I gotta watch out for this tomonage. Yeah. And then I go right back into it. Now you're kind of surprised. Right. right? So and I now give up my you're grip. playing my yeah. game. I'm taking, you know. Yeah. So. I mean, this is how it is. Back and forth, back and forth. I mean, that's why you you got to have a, a good teammates, too. That's you know? true. Yeah. yeah. And that's how you grow. That's yeah. how you grow and learn. I hope this was helpful, guys. Yeah. Also, check out judotv.com. Discount Coach and Taro. Yeah. You get, you know, whatever percentage off. I think it's 10% off. I'm not sure. Watch highest level judo. Go check it out. Thank you and very much. Look for their metagames. Metagames, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. All nice. right. Thanks for listening, guys. And we'll see you guys yep. in the next episode.